Welcome back. This is part three of Learning Godot, making your first game. If you haven't watched the other parts, please go back to part one to start, and let's get started. In this video, we'll be making the enemies that the player will have to dodge. We have the player scene complete, so we're going to make a new scene to contain the enemies. And the root node for this will be a rigid body 2D which we're going to rename to mob. And the children of this node are going to be an animated sprite, a collision shape 2D, which is just how we set up the player, and we're also going to add a visibility notifier 2D. Because what we're going to have these mobs do is they're going to spawn at a random spot around the edge of the screen. They're going to travel in a straight line, and then when they exit the screen, they're going to be deleted. And so that's what this node's going to help us do. So let's save this scene, mob scene, and start talking about the properties. Now the rigid body 2D has a lot of properties. But the one we're concerned with is the gravity scale. We want to set that to zero because we don't want our mobs falling down the screen like gravity is acting on them. And we also don't want them to run into each other. So if you scroll down to the physics body 2D section, there's a layer and a mask. And this is how you determine what bodies can hit what other bodies. And so the layer says that these mobs are going to be in layer 1. So we want to take the mask and uncheck layer 1. And so now they won't hit anything that's in layer 1. Now what we want to do is set up the animated sprite. And we make a new sprite frames resource. And we need to start adding the art for the animations. In the art folder here, we have three different enemy types. And we're going to use those each as a separate animation. So I'm going to name them after the file names. One's going to be named Fly. One is going to be named Walk. And one's going to be named Swim. And so I've dragged the two frames into each of the animations. And if we want to see how they look, we can click on Animated Sprite. And in its properties, there's, a, there's one called Playing. If we check that on, we can see the animation going. And we can choose which animation we want right here. And the only issue we have here is they're a little too fast. So we're going to go back over into the animation frames and change the speed. For Fly, three works well. And for swim and walk, we're going to set both of those to four. And now this art is also pretty large. If I zoom out here, you can see the mob takes up a pretty large chunk of the screen. So what we're going to do is resize them. Again, on the animated sprite, under the transform is a scale. And I'm going to set that to 0.75. So we just want to shrink it down a little bit, three quarters of its size. And then we'll be ready to add the collision shape. And just like with the player, we're going to use a capsule. But you can see the capsule is oriented the wrong way. So in the same place under transform, again, we're on the collision shape now, we're going to rotate that 90 degrees. And that way we will be pointing in the right direction. And once again, we're not going to stretch the shape, we're going to use the size handles. Don't forget, you can go over here and lock the children from being selected if, you, if it helps you not accidentally drag the collision shape away. Now let's add a script to the mob. We're going to use the defaults again. This time under template, I'm going to choose empty. That way I don't get any comments. So I hit Create, and I just get Extends Rigid Body 2D, and that's it. Now for our variables, we're going to make two export variables. And these are going to be to set the min and max speed of the mob. We don't want all the mobs traveling the exact same speed. That'll be a little boring. So these will be the two, the minimum and the maximum that the random speed value will be calculated between. So just go ahead and click on mob and we can set these. I'm going to set the minimum to 150 and the maximum to 250. Back to the script, we're going to make one more variable. This is going to be a list 
of the three types, fly, swim, and walk, that we can use to make a random choice for our mob each time we spawn one. Now what we want to do in the ready function is we want to set the animation of the animated sprite equal to a random choice out of the mob types list. So we want it to pick either 0 or 1 or 2. To do that, we can pick a random number. Rand i picks a random integer, any value. And we use the percent function to find the remainder when you divide by how many mob types there are. We want to divide by mob types dot size. And the remainder of that will be 0, 1, or 2. And so we'll have a random animation assigned. We don't need anything in the process function. We're going to see how the rigid body works in a minute. But we do need to delete the mob when it goes off the screen. That's what the visibility notifier is for. If you click on node, it has a screen exited signal. That's the signal we want. We're going to connect that. And if the mob goes off the screen, we're going to delete it, which we do using Q free. That completes the mob scene. Now we're going to make one more new scene to be our main. And the main scene's root node, we're just going to use node, which is the top of the list here. It's the simplest node. It has very few properties. It's really just a container we can put the other nodes inside of. We're going to call this main and save this scene. First thing we want to add to the main scene is a player. So we're going to click the instance a scene button here, which will add an existing scene. We're going to choose player. And now if I switch back over to 2D, now we have our player in our main scene. And one of the first things you'll notice is the player is probably a bit too much on the big side too. So over on our player scene, I'm going to click on the animated sprite and I'm going to shrink this one down to 0.5 x and y, which is going to make us have to resize our collision shape a little bit too. Save that, go back to main, and now you see our player a much more reasonable size on the screen. Now the next nodes we need are timer nodes. So we're going to find the timer node, and I want three of them. So instead of adding another, I'm going to duplicate them by clicking Command D. You would click Control D if you're on Windows or Linux. Now I have three timers. One is going to be named the Mob Timer. One is going to be named the score timer, and one is going to be named the start timer. And we're going to use these to control a few different properties. The mob timer is going to be how quickly the mobs spawn. So in the mob timer's wait time, we're going to set that to 0 0.5. And the score timer is going to indicate that it's time to add a point to the player's score. And since your score is how long you're staying alive, we're going to we're going to keep that set at 1. And then the start timer is gives you a little bit of start time after you hit the 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 play button. And so we're going to set that to 2 seconds. And we're also going to set it to one shot. One shot means the timer will tick down and then stop when it ends. The others, if they're not set to one shot, will repeat. When they, when they reach the end of their time period, they will restart again. And then we're going to add a node called a Position 2D. Position 2D is a helpful little utility node that help, lets you mark a position in the, in the game space. And so we're going to set this manually to 240, 450. And that's going to be the player's start position. So we got to make sure when you start a new game, we move the player to that spot. And that completes the setup of the main scene. In the next video, we will write the script for the main scene and tie everything together to finish this game up.